Greetings again in Jesus' name. What I'd like to talk about here is another aspect of the two different Gospels. The Gospel that's in the Scriptures, that cleanses and purges sins, breaks the bondage of sin, and the Gospel of repeat after me that's being preached far and wide across our world today. It seems like everybody from that venue, from that system, seems to argue always in favor of sin. It's always, no matter what they say about doing the right thing, or we should be doing this, or this is the right thing to do, and God wants us to do that, it always ends up that, well, we're all sinners. We're all going to sin. And we can't help but think when these people say that, they mean, well, we all go out and get drunk. We all go out and do vile things. We watch vile things on the Internet and the television. I think that's what they mean. They're not talking about just making a mistake in judgment or a misstep or uh, saying a, a sharp word to your wife or your husband or something. No, they're talking about falling in flat on your face into those type of sins, just like the Westminster Confession does. The Westminster Confession actually, actually has that tenet that God's going to allow you to fall into grievous sins to humble you so that you'll find out how worse and horrible you are so you'll need Him more and more. Well, why not turn it around? See, if those guys understood the truth, why not need God more and more from the beginning to be cleansed of all iniquity and purged and pure in heart? See, they have it all backwards. What occurred to me here was this great divide we have. I want to focus in on the word cleanse or purify. 2 Corinthians 7 1 says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So in the scriptures, purge means, and it's translated, to make clean, to be clean, to cleanse of all stain and defilement, and to purify. So there's several scriptures that use it in that manner. That purging can mean cleanse, or purify, which I have over here, or clean. It's not the same word as pure in the scriptures. This word's talking about purging. It's, like I said, it's often translated in that manner, to purify, to cleanse, to purge, to be clean, as it is there in that scripture and the other scriptures that I'll, I'll show you here. See, the key element in repentance that leads to a genuine salvation is this purging in its repentance, repentance proven by deeds. But also, it's the great divide between the true gospel that the apostles preached and the phony gospel that's masquerading in our world today as truth. That man can't, can't do this purging. He can't do this self-cleansing humility. He's, it's not possible. Now, under the repeat after me gospel, repentance, if it's mentioned at all, is nothing more than an apology for being a sinner. I mean, that's pretty much all it is in the church system. So any purging of sin uh, is really impossible. In the supposed convert, then, under that system, after he does the repeat after me routine, he's, he faces a pattern of repeated failures. He believes, he's told and he believes, it's normal for a sinner saved by grace, we're all wretched, filthy rags and all that. And this is that great deception that present day Christians, professed Christians are under. They have an illusion of justification in sin with all the feelings and the nuances and everything that goes along with it. But it's just an illusion. It's not, there's no truth to it. See, they'll never understand that no purging equals no purity. In the scriptures, that's the way it's presented. Hence, no salvation. See, unless the heart is purified by faith, like Acts 15:9 where Peter declares about the Gentiles that God made no distinction between us and them. He purified their hearts by faith. This is the same word. This word's purging, translated purified in that scripture. So faith purges the heart of sin. So when it, he talked about that, that they should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds in Acts 26, 18 through 20, where Paul declared the gospel, is bringing them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. 
He's talking about the same idea. This deeds being that purging of the sin that happens in repentance. See, when the humbled and broken sinner comes before God, laying aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, as the scripture says, which means a departure of all wrongdoings, a stopping of sin, at least the huge known sins for sure. Then he receives with meekness the implanted word that's able to save his soul. James 1, 21 and 22. Then the word, then and only then, can the word purify his soul by obedience to the truth. And obedience from the heart. He will believe from your heart, right? In Romans 6, well, obedience to the truth purifies the heart. 1 Peter 1, 22. Since you have purified your heart by obedience to the truth. See, he's saying that's, that's something that was done when you came to salvation. Then a person becomes a doer of the word and not a hearer. The repeat after me, deceive people, as it says in that scripture, deceiving themselves. See, repentance is this self-cleansing process where this purging happens. That's where the sinner, as a worker together with God, that, that synergy, that working together with God, out of an obedient heart, purged of all guile. That's what, it's, that's what this is about. Guile means treachery and deceit, ulterior motives, possibly, in, in our language. Having those underlying, you know, well, I can uh, do this now and repent later. Or I can sin and repent and sin and repent. No, purged of all treachery and guile. That's what this is talking about. Then it's prepared. Then and only then is the heart prepared as a fit vessel, like 2 Timothy chapter 2 talks about, as a fit vessel prepared to receive mercy in the refreshing the new birth, the regeneration of the Spirit, like Acts 3.19 is talking about. It. The refreshing of the Spirit means recovery of breath. That refreshing comes in through this process. Like he says in 2 Timothy 2.21, 20, if, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself you know, from these filthy things, then he's a vessel of honor, sanctified, pure, they're sanctified, pure, and useful for the Master, prepared for every good work. Then the Holy Spirit can come in. See, these people on, the, other, on the, the Great Divide are told that the Holy Spirit's got to come in first and they're a filthy vessel, all defiled, wallowing in their sins, and then the cleanup process begins. Well, it doesn't work, folks, because no purging equals no purity. You have to be purged first. Then the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you from all sin. 1 John 1, 9, everybody loves to quote that out of the system. Again, that word's purge. Same thing in uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 1. P, uh, Acts 15, 9. It's the same word. So the blood of Jesus Christ purging you, cleansing you of all sin, meaning purging it out of your heart. Because you came with a heart free from guile and deceit. Not trying to pull any fast one on God here. Come and clean with God, as we would say. Come and clean with him of your rebellion. So the inner man then has a departure from iniquity. Anyone that names the name of Christ departs from iniquity. As it, again, back in the 2 Timothy 2, uh, 19, just, just read the whole chapter of chapter 2 there. Now instead of that pattern of repeated failure to obey and keep falling into the sin and falling into sin, making more excuses for it, the regenerated man can rejoice because he's been washed, regenerated, and renewed in the Holy Spirit. That's the reason a man could cry out like David did in Psalm 32 when he re repented and came clean with God. Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That's what remission is, covering that past sin. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute that iniquity, in whose spirit there is no guile. Guile, deceit, some of the newer, newer translations translate that. See, he was free of the guile of hiding and covering. See, who covers his sins shall not prosper. He who confesses and forsakes them shall find mercy, right? Right, you've heard those verses, but you don't believe those. 